Well, it's Friday, and we made it. Another week down, another weekend on the horizon, and I for one intend to celebrate with some good old-fashioned crypto news. Because I am your host Andrew, and this is Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines. Let's just do it. First up, well, we knew this was coming. Genesis has filed for bankruptcy after suffering multiple blows during the bear market. As well as nursing heavy losses following the collapse of Three Arrows Capital and FTX, it owes $900 million to 340,000 Gemini Earn customers. Estimates suggest that Genesis has 100,000 creditors and the 50 biggest are owed $3.5 billion. Gemini's co-founder Cameron Winklevoss says the Chapter 11 proceedings are a crucial step in recovering funds for his customers. He once again claimed that Digital Currency Group's CEO Barry Silbert has refused to offer creditors a fair deal and threatened to file a lawsuit imminently. Welcoming the involvement of a court, he added, sunlight is the best disinfectant. FTX International could be revived, according to its new CEO. John Ray told the Wall Street Journal that a task force is looking into this idea, but it's unknown whether users would put their trust into this business again after, you yeah, know, that little incident involving billions of dollars of customer funds being misused by Alameda Research. You know, that, that little thing. Ray thinks that reopening FTX could allow creditors to get more of their funds back. He attacked Sam Bankman Freed for questioning his judgments on Substack, saying, We don't need to be dialoguing with him. He hasn't told us anything that I don't already know. Ray also defended his salary of $1,300 per hour, saying, Crime is very expensive. It does a lot of damage to people, and one of those damages is that people like me have to come in and fix it. And speaking of Sam Bankman Freed, he's claimed that there was a security incident outside of his parents' property, where he is under house arrest on a $250 million bond. His lawyers say a black car drove into metal barricades outside the house in Palo Alto, adding, three men got out of the car. When the security guard on duty confronted them, the men said something to the effect of, you won't be able to keep us out. The men got back in the car and quickly drove away before the security guard was able to see the license plate. SBF's legal team has previously warned that his parents have received a steady stream of threatening correspondence, including communications expressing a desire that they suffer physical harm. Andrew Tate is going to remain behind bars until February 27th. The influencer, crypto trader, and just seemingly all-around great guy was arrested in Romania late last year alongside his brother and two women. They're accused of human trafficking, rape, and forming an organized crime group. Tate was initially detained for 30 days amid fears that he could be a flight risk, but a Romanian court has now extended this deadline. The additional holding is designed to give police time to build a case against him. Tate, or his supporters, have been using his Twitter account to protest his innocence. A recent post said solitary confinement provides the perfect environment to meditate and hone my dragon fist. Once they fail to kill me, I will emerge. Perpetrators beware! Sure you can. I just added that. Sorry. It's no secret that JP Morgan CEO has long been a critic of Bitcoin, and it looks like he's not changing his mind anytime soon. During a CNBC interview in Davos, Jamie Dimon said the world's biggest cryptocurrency was a hyped up fraud and a pet rock. He went on to suggest that Bitcoin's fixed supply of 21 million could be changed, with Satoshi Nakamoto withdrawing billions of dollars. Dimon said financial journalists are wasting their breath by covering the crypto space, and it seems he's getting pretty fed up with being asked about it. Growing increasingly exasperated as his views on digital assets were challenged, the banker growled, I don't care about Bitcoin, so we should just drop the subject. And finally on this Friday, we'll leave you with some rare good news, specifically in the battle against ransomware. According to Chainalysis, the amount extorted by attackers in 2022 actually tumbled by 40% compared to the year before. The blockchain analytics firm says it's been an impactful year in tackling those who deceive victims in crypt files and then demand cryptocurrency in exchange for unlocking them. Estimates from Chainalysis claim $457 million was extorted by ransomware attackers in 2022. And in both 2020 and 2021, this figure stood at roughly $765 million. The driving force behind the declining revenues for attackers is also pretty interesting. Chainalysis believes that victims are just refusing to pay. Whereas 76% ended up submitting to ransom in 2019, this dwindled to just 41% in 2022. And speaking of crime, reach for the skies, this is a holdup. 
All right, now reach for that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Yeah, that's right, just like that. Yeah. Feedback on today's video? Well, comments are still disabled, so I really hope I'm doing a good job. Questions about our headlines or crypto in general? Why not ask Alex in that description below? Alex is a great resource for all things Web3 and the metaverse, and that about does it for today. Again, I've been your host, Andrew. These have been your headlines, and ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. So sweet. Well, anyway, we'll see you Monday. Have a good one.